if this is some area wrong with NickGamer.com, they were here today and we talked about his sack with Wilson, I'm afraid about the pass. So Chuck, why don't you start off and tell me about yourself? Yeah, um, so yeah, my name is Jeff Welch. Um, I have been backcountry skiing since 2007. Um, so quite a while now. Uh, I got involved with Friends of Birth of Pass um, something like six or seven years ago. Uh, I had been working at uh, Wilderness Exchange, actually, the outdoor gear shop, and um, they've been a huge supporter of FOBP for a really long time. And uh, so I helped organize FOBP events at their store while I was working there. And uh, when I left Wilderness Exchange, I was like, oh, I want to get more involved with Friends of Birth of Pass. I knew a lot of the guys that were part of it at the time. And so joined in and um, now I'm uh, the I'm on the board of directors and I'm the chair of the education committee. So our education team. Um, so, yeah. Zach, how about you? Hey, I'm Zach Wilson. I grew up in Montana early, early on, did a lot of skiing, but through uh, high school and college, my dad and his friends got big into snowmobiling. So did a bunch of snowmobiling during then. Came out to Denver in 04 for graduate school and left the snowmobile up in Montana because I was a broke, busy grad student and uh, went full steam into snowboarding and hitting the resorts here. And in about 06 is when I decided I needed to get back into the backcountry again and, and bought a split board and been split boarding pretty much exclusively ever since. And then been with uh, Friends of Birth had Pass, met, met some folks through the old splitboard.com days that, that uh, they've kind of petered out with all the other forums that, that uh, are popping up now, but met uh, some, some old school Friends of Birth had Pass folks through then and uh, started in with uh, Friends of Birth had Pass, probably been with, with them for about six years now, I think, six or seven years. And... Uh, been on the board for a few years now and, and instructing at the classes for a few years now. Hey, so <clears throat> tell me about what, I mean, you started out as a group of people, friends, trying to support their own for the past. How has that evolved sustained to now, you know, what it's not like in terms of your education or support? Yeah, so uh, Friends of Birth of Pass actually started back in 2003, and it was basically when the uh, the old ski area that was up there shut down for the final time. The Forest Service was kind of trying to figure out what what do we do with this place, how do we manage it, and Friends of Birth of Pass was a group of kind of diehard Birth of Pass skiers, uh, patrollers, you know, people who worked or skied at the resort that came together and. They were the group that advocated with the Forest Service to keep the pass open to recreational human-powered backcountry use. That was the original sole goal of Friends of Birth of Pass. And once the access was secured initially, they figured out pretty quick that in order to keep that access, that people had to behave responsibly up there and not be causing avalanches, not be putting you know, snow on the road, not having excessive search and rescue call-outs, that sort of thing. And so that's that's really where the uh, avalanche education program, uh, the awareness classes came from, um, was that kind of grassroots need um, th to be filled for, you know, just basic awareness level education. That didn't really exist in the early 2000s. There was, you know, obviously there was the level one classes, level two classes and stuff, but like common, you know, awareness level education was not easily accessible then. So that's really where the education program with Friends of Birth of Pass came from. So we still do the advocacy stuff, the access stuff. You know, we work with the Forest Service and, you know, with CDOT on anything that's relevant to backcountry skiers up there, you know, but that's pretty solid at this point. So that's where, you know, the education now is our main focus for sure. And so that brings me to this season. Zach, what's your thoughts about how this season may look like? Um, especially with education, you know, maybe more people are there on the trail, so. Yeah, I think everyone agrees that when the resorts closed down last spring, March, everybody bought some new backcountry gear and started headed in, in into the backcountry to keep 
getting snow and and I don't see that changing anytime soon. I know like I'm sure all those people who spent a bunch of money on on their gear want to keep getting their money's worth out of it this season. There's still concern about uh, how many people the resorts are going to be taking and and uh, just how that's going to work all together. And so I'm sure a lot of people are still going to be heading into the backcountry. And so we definitely have a lot of new folks out there who can use use some avalanche education for sure. So we're going to need to need to focus on on those folks and get it out to to the newbies. Yeah, and I think I think we kind of lucked out last spring um, in that by the time the ski resorts closed down, like we had a pretty stable snowpack. So even though there was a lot of people getting out and maybe making some bad decisions, you kind of could get away with it at that time. And, you know, this year we'll probably have our typical bad snowpack that we always have in Colorado. And it's, it's probably going to be a different story. And so I think one of the biggest challenges is going to be, you know, how do we reach the new people? And, you know, we have some ideas on that uh, from our end, but like, I think that that's going to be something that's a, you know, something that the greater backcountry community can really help out with and push people towards getting educated, you know, whether it's coming to the Friends of Perth of Past stuff or, you know, CIC Know Before You Go or taking the level one or, you know, even just going out with somebody more experienced, you know, pushing the, all of us experienced people, we know to do that, but, you know, really helping push the new people uh, towards that, I think is going to be really helpful and important this year. So you think about practice, right? Mm, practice makes profit, you know, pull out the peak, you know, using a search pattern. And I mean, how many people actually say they practice it in shop or do it ice bake, you know, snow plow? How do we think about what are the opportunities that people do, you know, to prepare for that? I mean, I know A, B, C, I see big and park that what options do we have? Uh, the best part is just practicing with your friends for sure. Um, that's one of the things we always, whenever we have people out that we have showing around for our guided on snow days, um, it's always their biggest eye opener is when they first start to try to use their beacon probe shovel and realize that they have a lot of practice to do. And so that's, that's our biggest push then is like, now you know that you guys have to take your time and and practice with these and so just getting that word out um, there are the the uh, beacon parks that are available i know i don't go to the resorts anymore so i don't remember which ones have them there's not really any in, in the back country which would be nice the the ones that i know of off the top of my head are um, a basin and monarch both have Beacon Park set up. Um, a lesser known thing is Winter Park always has a couple beacons buried somewhere on the mountain um, that the patrollers use. So just ask Ski Patrol where, you know, roughly where it is, what run it's on. And they totally don't mind, you know, the public doing searches on those beacons that they have buried around. So, yeah. Um, you know, something else just kind of to add to that, like you brought up a lot of the good things that you can do practice wise for, you know, avalanche rescue um, in terms of, you know, practice digging in a snow bank or, you know, when you get done with the tour for the day, bury a, a beer with a beacon and go, you know, I'll go try to find it. Um, but I think it's also important to practice all the other things that go along with backcountry skiing as well. Um, just things like getting your transitions more efficient because if you are at the bottom of a run and there's an avalanche and you have to skin back up to do a search, like being able to do that transition efficiently is a good thing. Um, practice your communication and your decision-making in the group. Even if you're out on a really simple tour where maybe there's not a lot of risk or a lot of decision-making, like just practice making observations, sharing them with your friends, you know, cause it's just the more you do it and the more it becomes second nature, the better at all of these things you are. Yeah. And there's also the companion rescue courses that you can take. And it's a lot more accessible than a few days at an AVI one class. It's one day course, less expensive, but it's, it's all about companion rescue, how to, how to organize that, go through your beacon probe shovel. 
and that's definitely a great way to really I mean, practice I got, that. I, mean, I got to ask your course because I, I really get a lot of insights. Just interacting with my partners, the communication piece, I saw how easy it was to break down, you know, people who's doing what, or, you know, and so that's really important for people to dial the dynamics, you know, that come back to team dynamics. This is to make it all those things. Yeah, and so they, that brings me to the thought of um, Appalachian education. We do have, and it sounds like a lot of the courses almost booked up already, but there are scholarships available for people looking to um, save money. So do you think you help me tell me about the George Dirt scholarship? Yeah, so George Dirth was a, a split boarder. I knew him back in the day, originally from splitboard.com again. And uh, we got out for some tours and he passed away in a avalanche, I think it was January of 2013, might be off. I think, I think you're right, January 1st, 2013. And um, his, his mom, Lisa, has taken it upon herself to spread the good word of avalanche awareness and, and to, to not have to have your loved ones feel what she, she had to feel. And so every year we, uh, we try to promote her, her, her work and she uh, she basically fundraises for avalanche awareness scholarships or avalanche level one scholarships and uh, and so she's she's done an amazing job the last couple of years she's gotten a lot of a lot of funding and has had the ability to put out quite a few scholarships now I think it's I think last year she didn't even uh, give out as many scholarships that as she had available, it was like 12 or 13 or so. And so she's been doing some great work that way. And we have a, one of the ways we help her fundraise, we do a, a George Dirth Memorial class for her every year. It's usually early on in the season. We're still scheduling that one, figuring out exactly when and where to do that. It's, it'll be one that we, we might try to do outdoors since it's usually earlier on, and so that might be better for uh, for this season. It's good to be pressed. So we have the ice snow. Um, a few days or two days, right? Um, which we can start January twenty third around there. Or so. Yeah. So I realized we didn't actually uh, like fully explain our education program. So we do a series of absolutely free avalanche awareness classes every year. Um, each class is about a two-hour session. Um, traditionally, those have always been in-person classes, um, you know, at a gear shop or a brewery or that sort of thing. We're still hoping to be able to do some in-person events. Might, you know, obviously COVID is kind of changing everything and re regulations change all the time. But um, we're hoping to be able to do some at least, you know, socially distanced, that sort of thing, maybe outdoors. Um, but we are going to have some sort of um, digital um, virtual format this year for the classes. So even if we can't hold any in-person classes at all, we will still be having classes this year. Um, and, you know, to be clear, this is avalanche awareness. This is not a replacement for a level one by any means. This is a really good introduction. And we hope to explain kind of the basics and explain why you need to take a level one. Um, so we will have those classes that should be Usually we do about 20 to 25 classes every year. Um, in addition to the classes, we have our on snow sessions. Um, so this year they're actually gonna be a little bit later. It's January or February 6th and 7th, I believe. And what that is, is it's a about three quarters of a day up on Berthed Pass. And we go through the same material that we taught in the classroom in a hands-on on the snow format. So basically take you out for a mock tour and work through all that awareness level curriculum uh, out on the snow. And so it's it's something pretty cool and unique that we do that uh, I believe it's really just us and uh, Friends of the San Juan, um, our sister organization down uh, in uh, Southwestern Colorado that do this sort of thing. And again, the on snow is completely free. Um, like I say, it's two days, February 6th and 7th, but participants come to one day or the, or the other, so. 
Um, and you do have to have come to one of our classroom sessions uh, in order to come to the on snow. Awesome. Thank you so much. It's great. Yeah, I mean, is there anything else you want to share with the public, you know, for the patch.org as a website or for the other? You got Facebook, you got um, Instagram, you share yeah. posts. Yeah, great. Yep. Yeah, so search uh, Friends of Birth of Pass on Facebook. We'll pop right up. Uh, birthofpass.org is our website. Um, our Instagram is at Birth of Pass. Um, we have been uh, starting to kind of ramp up content on Facebook and Instagram lately. So we've been doing kind of a cool uh, preseason series, kind of some things that you can do to get your brain working early season. Um, and uh, so check that out. And we should be announcing more details on our classes for this year pretty soon. Probably, hopefully within about a, the next month, we'll have a schedule out and kind of more details on that virtual format. So. Yeah, have you taken the pledge yet? <laughs> I've taken Just the saw pledge. that come up today, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yep, yeah, take yeah, kind of a cool thing CAIC is doing, the take the, get the forecast, or get the forecast pledge, is that what they're calling it? Yeah. I think um, so. Pledging to take the, to go read the avalanche forecast every time you go out in the backcountry, um, which is something that hopefully all of us are doing anyway, but yeah, uh, I, most, I took the pledge. If you talk to, to most people who, get out quite a bit it's they definitely check it every every time they go out but it's usually every day and just to to keep track of what's going on with the snowpack yeah whether you're definitely. going out or not that's pretty important piece is like stay up to date you know monitoring you know that's part of the observation piece collecting data from it's not just the mcic but the back country facebook groups you know the better we try to share be open with the um conversation say hey there's no past just right here you know share those observations and we have the app to but report the conditions and i think so much has changed in the last three five years you know since i got into back country myself i'm really impressed and exciting and i think key point is get educated you know before you go so yeah uh, it's it's amazing how many more resources are out there now uh compared to when i started uh you know, 13 years ago or, or whatever, like there is so much information online and CIC is doing more and more. There's more information there than ever before. Um, you know, having the, the Facebook groups to, to check in and, you know, get conditions updates that way um, is really awesome. The mapping tools that are available now. Um, yeah, it's, it's pretty cool how much information is out there if you uh, look for it. Awesome. Well, thank you guys for um, sharing with your experiences of Friendship of the Past. And so with that, this is Aaron Lord from Ikima.com. Hey, Chuck. Hey, Zach. Take care. All right. Thanks, man. Thanks for having us. Thanks, Aaron. Yeah.